Thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories and everything around celebrities and gossips. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Nimi Dekombi and Ife Oluwa Oshokeye. Hey, guys. And Nube Gang. And Chile with the most time. Gang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Continue now. And Nube Gang. No, my name is not part of Gang. Let's, let's have another gang, like Tea yes. Time Gang. Mm -hmm. Eh? Chile Ah, I'm on now. What you now? What do the shoe? The pain. Oh, you only the new bear here. I'm a new bear gang. Don't worry. Bank alert is coming. You're going to be very rich. No, no, I no. I saw no, it. There's this money in the bank. Like you know, when millionaires are talking, you know, you just need to talk about more money. So, so new bear. If you are a millionaire, why are you part of a new bear gang? I'm part of the new bear gang because I want to be a trillionaire. How okay. about that? Okay, all right. Your hair part. Don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's start with the story we we're supposed to talk about on the previous episode, but they didn't have enough time to, which is on Idris Abdul Karim, who reportedly was arrested for assaulting his landlord over electricity bill. According to Insta Blog Niger, he attacked the landlord, Oladipo Abimbola, over an unpaid 535,000 naira accumulated electricity bill on January 3rd, 2020, at Valley View Estate somewhere in Lagos. According to the landlord, Idris' wife was the one who rented the apartment. And reacting to the statement issued by the landlord, Idris Abdul Karim accused the landlord of making advances to his wife. He alleged that his landlord had sexually harassed his wife in his absence and that all effort to make him stop has failed okay if I... okay so first of all yeah mm. I saw the most hilarious comment and somebody was like Idris what we're expecting from you is a song mm. not all this admirable behavior where will you let go <laughs> and but um, it's so funny because um, if because the landlord actually said um, the wife was the one who got the apartment for mm -hmm. Idris, right? And um, apart from no, that... No, not say if it's for Idris. No, just said the Idris, wife like, rented... She's the one who rented the apartment. No, no, no. I'm talking about reliable sources. She oh, okay. got it for from Idris. Idris. Where does she stay? They stay together, but... Why? Okay, make your point. No, let me explain it now. <laughs> now, it's, I don't know about where she stays, but she got it for Idris, but they stay together because that's the only reason why the landlord would be harassing her in that house. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So that's why I said they stay together. But she was the one who paid. It's like, we're married, and then you are the front to get me a crib, right? Basically, the house is in her name. Yeah, it's in her name. Yeah, that kind of thing. So at the end of the day, <laughs> All the sexual harassment thing, I don't know where Idris is coming from, but if you're owing, pay off your death. What if it was sexually harassing his wife? Well, but there's still an element of truth that you're owing. Yeah. So maybe it's because somebody is looking at you like you're not man enough. That's the only reason why they will be harassing you. Why wife. is he not man enough? That he didn't pay the electricity bill? Or, okay, is that the reason? And they said that he has, he has unpaid rent as well. Oh, okay. I don't know I if you guys that saw that. Yeah, I think um, on this story, I'll just say that <clears throat> um, it's um, it's kind of like a pattern where you see that a lot of Nigerians feel like the best way they can solve issues is through violence. Mm. Um, whether he's owing um, NEPA bills or whatever, I don't feel like it had to have gotten to this level. Mm -hmm. They could have settled this in other ways that we'll not hear about it on social media. The reason why we're hearing about it is because it got to a violent state. Mm -hmm. So I don't, even whether Idris is in the wrong, whether the landlord was actually sexually harassing his wife, mm -hmm. he could have gone to the police, report it. How, how, did, the, how report. did the bill get to 535,000 <laughs> naira? And why is it the landlord that is dragging NEPA bill? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, there's, there's so a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of questions. There's so many questions. Um, yeah, I believe um, maybe it's a service department where you're supposed to be paying and it's not prepaid. So if they're saying they'll disconnect you for that. So you, there's a monthly payment and service department where you're supposed to be paying for mm -hmm. your EKDC. Um, that's um, IKDC? IK. Yeah, so that's the Keja Distribution Company, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a stipulated amount that you're supposed to be paying monthly for that. And they disconnect... It's for months. Yeah, so it's been owing for months. So basically, 
I don't think it will be like two months, three. It's because I want to believe because uh, it's an estate. So I believe it's a service department. So, so they can't really cut him off and all that. What? No. So it, I think they you to explain how the bill became that much. That. Okay. Uh, I just hope they much. sort whatever the issue is because it's really messy. If you're owing someone pay yeah, and so even if the person is violence. chasing your wife, that's not enough reason not to pay. You're already owing. So pay and they sort out that part. Do you understand? That's what uh, I'm saying. Like, like, I don't like the part where people are I, what I don't like now. in this story is how um, people are trying to spin the story around um, or focusing it around the fact that the wife paid for the rent and in my head I'm like so what if she paid That's for the rent like the you two are story. married so if he pays for the rent fine if she pays for the rent fine you are both living Aww. in the house so that was where I was actually coming from but anyway let's move Aww. on <laughs> a lot of women don't see it that way a lot of people don't see it that way because yeah, that has been the center of the conversation. Like, why is she the one? I mean, for the landlord to make that, oh, it's your wife that paid for the rent, it means that he's yeah. saying it from a condescending place because the point is the rent is being paid. Mm. Anyway, moving on to the next story, Victoria Nyama lists um, reasons why she stopped taking her kids to church. In a lengthy Instagram caption, she says, I know that the Bible is a source of good practice on positive training, but I don't want my children to ever tolerate abuse like I did because pastor said. I basically lived, endured abuse, um, violence because pastor said marriage is endurance, patience is a virtue. I grew up attending church consistently like my life depended on it. Depended dead on it and referencing the pastor and man of God. Narratives and facts are totally different. Some of this, those narratives translated um, by some pastors destroy our ability for critical thinking, which then affects our ability to logic-based analysis of ideas. I don't want anything that would change their intellectual capacity into a series of emotional triggers based on wanting to belong, approval, judgment, and fear." End of quote. Hmm. Why are you laughing, Nimi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I understand where she's coming from. Okay. Because um, the truth is that um, the conversation around domestic violence and um, for people like her who are domestic abuse survivors, you if you dig deep, you'd realize that most of them, one of the reasons why they stayed so long in their marriages, apart from the fact that society was, you know, societal expectations, their parents, they also shared some of these things with their pastor because mm -hmm. they see their pastor has a somewhat like a spiritual authority over mm -hmm. them. And some of the advice that their pastor would have given them would be like marriage, you have to endure for better, for worse. Because she quoted Sorry to cut you, you know this advice doesn't even come when they start beating you. Yeah. It comes from the day you go to your pastor say you're getting married. Yeah, you are, you, you, they sit you down Patience. and tell you how uh, as well. you are entering. Patience, it's you not easy. Oh, ah, oh, yeah. me. It's not easy. You have to endure. Endure. Yeah. He will annoy you. He will do things you don't like. He's your baby. You, oh. you. you know, so yeah. So, yeah Those yeah, are yeah, kind yeah. of things they hear And then, them. yeah, she quoted um, a particular scripture where they said that if you are slapped, turn mm -hmm. the other cheek. So probably that was another thing that a pastor, you know, told her when she was going through the domestic no, She said that that Bible verse, verse has made her seem weak, like even till tomorrow yeah. when someone does something she doesn't like. Yeah, mm. it's, a, it's everybody that it affects. So I'm glad that she's um, coming out to speak about it. A lot of people might not agree with her for mm -hmm. saying that she's going to like not take her children to church. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might say that there are different churches that are more... A lot of churches have evolved. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches now, whenever it comes to the topic of domestic abuse, they tell you that leave the marriage. But it's not just about domestic abuse. I think mm -hmm. she's, she, of course, she used that as an example, as an example. because that is her own experience, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like it has a lot to do with even the way you see life, mm -hmm. the way you relate mm -hmm. with people, yeah. the way you think of failure and success, the way you view things mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. So it's not just about domestic violence. There are people that once they are leaving their house and something happens, it could be something regular but because there is this superstitious thing mm. in the back of their mind they tell you you know what i'm going back in because if i keep going something is going to happen to me of yeah, course that sure. wasn't thought in church but there are some parts of the teachings in church as well if we start dissecting them yeah. that will bring it back to our I life and be like oh i can't do this i can't live this life i can't talk to this person like this yeah. So I, for me personally, I would say that um, the church plays a huge role when it comes to marriages because a lot of people get married in the church. A lot of people do 
you know, wedding is mostly in the church. So pastors play a huge role. And when it comes to the, you know, conversation surrounding domestic abuse, we should not tell people that they should stay. I think we're, we've been having this conversation even on this table, and we've been saying it over and over again. If you're in an abusive situation, the best thing you can do is to get out of that situation. I think that this kind of message should also be taken to the pulpit so that people can hear these things and know that, okay, they have an option and they have a choice. But um, there's a Bible back into that that says um, divorce is not an option, but it's because the world is evolving and then we've seen a lot of women lose their what lives. What you just said is the reason she's not taking her children to church. <laughs> exactly. No, like, no. You, you are a living <laughs> life example, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, divorce is not an option in the Bible, but because the world is evolving and we've seen a lot of women lose their lives to domestic violence, and we've also seen men lose their lives to domestic violence as well. So, um, yes, if you... If you are in an abusive relationship, mm. the best thing to do is definitely leave. And um, I totally agree with her about this whole church thing because some people say like, uh, my spiritual father said, yeah. my this said, my this said. No, God is your spiritual father, not your pastor. Mm. First thing people need to understand, the pastor is only there to pass the message and translate the Bible and the pastor is correct. Human. Huh? I said, it's the human. Pastor is human. And it's supposed to translate the Bible correctly. But you see a lot of pastors these days, they twist the Bible. You go to this church, they say this about this particular scripture. And then you go to another church, they are saying another thing in time. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. So so I get confused problem, sometimes. Huh? So <laughs> I personally do not go to church. Yeah. My mom has a problem with that. Mm. Um, ah, but you said you've resumed now, no, and no, your no, girlfriend listen, has now, taken listen, you. Listen, like, okay. I personally do not go to Sunday services, uh, so let me put it that way. Okay. I'm a midweek service and guy. So I go to church on Tuesdays because midweek is not about you, gang, 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 of church and all of that. It's just, one. Huh? What is it about? It's more like... Teaching. Yeah, teaching. Okay. And then the type of church I go to is more like a millennial church. I go to David Christian Center. Okay. And um, it's a church that they teach you how we're supposed to be. It's around yeah, your life. Yeah, and your church will come and pay for advice. Uh, but um, we need to go out a bit. But before we do, um, you mentioned something about the, the word has moved on from the Bible verse that is saying the verse is not an option. I don't think the word has necessarily moved on. I think the word has decided to misinterpret that part of the Bible and hold on to that part. Because the same Bible says you have to love your wife like yourself. Mm. And there is no way you will love a person as you love yourself and maltreat or, in fact, forget about domestic violence, like do anything that is in the slightest form going to hurt them. So because they have deviated from that part, that divorce is an option is also not standing because you cannot, when something is balanced this way, you take it off here, it's going to fall on this other side. So it's not just about that, but... We need to go on a break. Are we going to continue this conversation? Do you want to? Yeah, because I haven't learned Okay, it. when we return, we'll continue this conversation. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right <laughs> oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dodge, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi like. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Before we move on to the next story, Ife would love to touch on our previous story. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, a lot of people need to realize that um, they need to understand the scripture personally. Mm -hmm. It's not what your pastor necessarily tells you that mm -hmm. you need to go by. If they tell you a Bible per se to go and read at home or they shared it in church, 
you personally go home and get your own understanding from that scripture. Mm -hmm. It's not what they necessarily tell you. Because a lot of pastors these days are even fake. We have the Christ pastors. I don't know if um, you've seen um, this video that was circulating on one of the social blogs about a man that was upset about um, a pastor that was trying to sleep with his daughter after sleeping with the mother. Do you understand? Allegedly. Yeah? Allegedly, yes. But we, we all saw the video. So I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying. Is that like, the one that also brought out international passports from the shoe? From the shoe. There's so many different. So do you understand? Like, there's so many fake pastors. So don't even rely on a spiritual leader to start with. No, believe in yourself and have a perfect understanding of the scripture. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. If you have a conviction about a particular scripture, that's what you should go by. Know what the pastor says, basically. I think mm -hmm. um, she also said that in her post that she's going to teach them about God, mm -hmm. not from a pastor's perspective, yeah. but from her own understanding of who God is. She said she's going to teach them how to respect and love people, still based on the scripture. So I think that that is... That yeah, is so your personal conviction is all that matters. personal conviction is not like you have sense so sometimes you need to go to a church that can help you or seek knowledge. I mean, well, that's it, the truth. it doesn't mean like you don't have sense, but <laughs> if it works for you, my dear, please go on. Yeah, exactly. I think people uh -huh. should just find what works yeah, for you. Yeah, find what works, find for, what you, works for you, basically. Truly. Okay. Moving on to the next. Yes, Baba Lau. Your side chicks look hotter than your wife's only because you don't live with them. You only see them when they um, perfect their makeup. Don't leave a wife because of a hot side chick. Her hotness is a mirage that will disappear once you start living with her. By the time you enter the toilet after she exits and see her true face when she wakes up in the morning and um, hear her belch once or twice, the scales will fall from your eyes and you will realize you have jumped from frying pan to fire. And this Why? is coming from controversial Nigerian author on social critics, Reno. Why did you miss the part of you going into the toilet after she just, after she just got out? Why did I miss it? Yeah, did you I read it? Yeah, oh, I you did. did. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so um, I think Reno is just stating facts 100 because a lot of men lose that thing because you see your wife on a daily basis and she feels very comfortable with you and um, she ties the wrapper in the house and all of that and then at the end of the women, please do not tie a wrapper and when you wake up, remove your hair next I bet, I bet I don't see to my be head honest, let's eh? word. I'm not cooking. going out, I'm not removing my hair Do you know the very, very nice hair net you can wear or to cover your hair? You don't really have to. You see a lot of women walking the streets with hair nets. Are you advising them when you're talking about You know, you know let me just come in and say this stuff. <laughs> When you say stuff like that, you are making it seem like I said, you know, the reason why men cheat on their wives is because Sister, they don't look good. Look, it's before you became a wife. See yourself as there are, women, there are women, women that are hot, extremely good, even if while they are white, the bed and they are to the men kitchen, still cheat but they still cheat on them. them. So, what do we say about those women? Look, my point is, I don't know about those women. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because definitely, mm -hmm. side chicks are in mirage, to be honest, because mm. they are what you want to see. Before you would even say you want to cheat on your wife, or it's because you are expecting something more that somebody else is giving. So men have come out to say it's not about exactly. marriage, it's about what's the thing now? Salad that like they want. Well, how did they say it again? They want they cannot eat <laughs> they the same eat, soup every yeah. day, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. That um, no, some men have problems. Where is coming okay. From. Okay. Some men, mm -hmm. some men have problems. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Some men cannot. Um, they, don't they don't have self-control. They don't have self-control, exactly. Mm. They go for what they think is the right thing. But a woman that has been there for you from day one, that has been supportive of your career, your choices, your mm. decisions, she's not to be thrown away compared to any... So even if you want to have a side chick... Even if... Eh? <laughs> That's why some men are not okay. So maybe I'm one of them. Okay, so, <laughs> so even if you want to have a side chick, mm -hmm. it's not a good reason to ever leave your wife because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you realize that by the time you meet, uh, you bring this side chick into the house, mm -hmm. you'll be doing exactly the same thing and then you start the same cycle all over again looking for another uh, side chick. So I think, how many side chicks can you have? If to be it's honest. okay. Hmm? It's okay. What I was saying. Why? 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 It's it? just okay. Why? <laughs> Let me also talk. So you don't, you, you don't it believe okay. you should have side chicks. Uh, what I would, It's okay. The truth <laughs> is just that Rena is just giving one side or like ten percent of the mm. reason why people actually cheat in marriages. When people infidelity 
and marriage is it's a very, a very it's dicey. A disease. You know, it's a very, very dicey um, topic because you have women who also cheat on their husbands. Are they cheating on their husband because yeah, it's not women rapper. cheat on oh. their husbands. Do you understand? Because so he doesn't it, have six parts, baby. <laughs> so when it comes to infidelity in marriage, it's you okay. cannot say that this is... <laughs> it's okay. Let me want to talk. Okay. You I'll cannot say that this is the reason why people are cheating. He has a, he has a point, mm -hmm. but that is... This point he has given does not cover the entire umbrella because you have women who are hotter than even the side chicks that mm, men sure. go after. So what would be the motivation for them going outside think, their marriage? Look, it's, it's not about the, sometimes it's not about the hotness. Man, not sometimes the women also have problems. Do you understand when you come back home and then there's a woman that is nagging? She's very old too. You are so still, I, think, I feel like you're still trying to blame the women women know, for the I'm not blaming, no, I'm not trying to, no, I'm not trying, I, like I, I said from the onset, know. some men have problems. I think when it comes to infidelity, it is the problem with the individual that is cheating in their marriage because you made we the marriage foul. Break. So when you are... But I don't think Reno was trying to give you reasons why men cheat. He was basically advising the ones that are cheating already yeah. to say, don't think because she is a side chick and you don't see her so often, now she's beginning to be better than your wife because there is something about seeing people too much. They call it see finish. So when you wake up yeah, in the morning and you see this person, you see this person, you see this person, it takes a lot of commitment and self-respect and sense to know that this person is still of value. And when people don't have that, I think that's where he's coming from. Yeah. But however... Yes, sis, I think you should just think about being happy and looking good. When you look good and stand in the mirror, don't you feel good? So I'm not saying you should look good for a man or look good for your husband. Look good for yourself. From the moment you wake up to the point you leave your house, just take care of your skin, take care of your body, take care of your size, take care of everything you have to take care of and look good for yourself. But trust me, forget about the compliment. You will love yourself first. Before yeah. anybody Self begins love. to tell you, oh, I love you. In other words, look. don't tie rapper. Don't oh, wear still doesn't mean that your husband will <laughs> so not So we are bringing back one of our sweetest. But before you find out who this sweet lady is, let's go on a very quick break and you'll see us. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like Woo! <laughs> Welcome back. So on this table called Tea Time Table, we've had so many people. People are scarce, people are scarce go anchors, people that just came to show themselves, you know. But um, sometimes they come back because we love what we do and we have this very amiable environment. And one of them who told us she was going to Australia, we have to go and drag her back. <laughs> and she's here right now. Hello, Hello you feel my. <laughs> Welcome this is back. Big Brother House. <laughs> I am so Ife excited to be Omai back. Yeah. Mm. Report to the tea time room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, Big Brother. Oh, <laughs> How has it been good? It's been good. Okay. It's been, it's been interesting. I've missed you guys. In a weird twisted way. Don't get uh, swollen heads, please. No, but he is the blushy one. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been it's been interesting few months. I think about six mm -hmm. months away. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Let me update you guys. Okay. I've been living my best. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so I've done a bit of traveling. I've also been off the market. I got engaged. Aww. My ring is in here. Aww. It's too big, so it's been resized. If not, I'll just be like always just showing off. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I've traveled a bit. Um, just to explore more of Africa, understand my culture. And then I worked a bit in the um, Hollywood industry. Okay. I worked on Small Chops, the movie. Um, mm. It was an amazing experience, but there's no place like Plus TV, so mm -hmm. here I am. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. We're so glad to you. have you back. Thank you. I missed you too. So, so having to travel around a bit of Africa yes. again, you, I mean, you've stayed there 
before you went to Australia and yeah. you, was there any significant change? Um, okay, so I did, I first did Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ethiopia is a closed border, mm. so it looks very different. Most of the African countries are open borders, so um, I think we get influences from all over the place, even with the way our architecture looks like, like our housings or the way we dress. Mm. It's kind of like, even on this table, like we look pretty Western, mm -hmm. you know. Ethiopia is closed, so it's very different. And it's, so it's, it's kind of... It's an untouched yes, African culture. Yeah, so I mean, it's not like they wear wrappers and canes and stuff, yeah. but the housing, the way they, they just live their lives is very different. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed is that they don't wear weaves as much, and that mm -hmm. was just, like, interesting to me. Like, no, okay. Well, you missed the show. I think it would have been amazing if she was there when African Simba came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that was interesting. Then I did Ghana. I did West Africa, really. I did Ghana, um, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Benin Republic, Togo. It was kind of interesting because those countries are tiny, mm -hmm. but it's so beautiful there. Like... Really, really nice. I didn't really spend too much time there because my main focus was Ghana. Then I, pinned, I, I missed Ife. Mm -hmm. I literally came when I left. Oh, no, he left when I came or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but I, we're in different regions. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when I came, went to Cape Coast, you were just leaving. Mm -hmm. So it was Cape Coast where I got engaged as Aww. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's love on our table. We are not haters. Oh God. So, yeah, most of the exploring, that really, really exploring, was in Ghana. Um, I was honestly, because I, I took my fiance, who, who is Australian, I've never been to Africa. And to be honest, I was embarrassed because when we we're in Nigeria, I'll be like, anything that happens, I'm like, that's just how Africa is, babe. Understand? We're getting there. And then I get to Ghana, and it's like. All those issues that we have in Nigeria, they don't. Mm -hmm. um, safety was one of them. It's just very interesting to see that um, it's safer there. Even for me, as a black woman, I was just like, what is going on? I could walk around sure. freely at like 3 a.m. by myself. Mm -hmm. While he was in Lagos, we were tired. Even if it's just to go to the bathroom, I'm like, I'm coming with you. Because mm -hmm. you get to the toilet now, some guy will say, oh, you will give me this or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, there was always harassment of difference. I call, I was shamed all the time, especially on the island. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was called Olosho. Oh, great. I was called, okay. like, a lot of stuff. But, you know, I Ghana was... I a lot yeah, to say. What yeah, time? Sorry. Okay. But well, you know you're here with us, yeah. And yeah. I believe your travels have um, given you more perspective on things and topics we've been of talking course. about. So welcome back. Thank you. Welcome. I'm All ready right. to fight everyone on this table, especially <laughs> him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I Definitely. missed that. I missed that. I missed the fight, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, will join us for tea time this afternoon. So that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. I remember you can watch this conversation all over again by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel on Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Alto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Nimide Kombi, Ife Oluwa Shokeye, and of course, Ife Omai. Thank you. And hey, thank you to, to the entire team. My name is Osi Godwin saying do stay with us.